Windows 10 reached end of life almost two weeks ago, meaning that Microsoft will supposedly no longer support the platform with security updates or technical assistance. Yet, with about 40% of the world's Windows devices still running Windows 10 according to stats counter global stats, even if its numbers are not 100% accurate, it's about that time to talk about your options if you're still running the operating system today and ways to stay secure. The first option is to move to Windows 11. Now this option might not be applicable to everyone because, as a reminder, to be able to officially upgrade to Windows 11 you will need a TPM 2.0 chip on board, secure boot enabled, and either an Intel 8th gen or an AMD Zen Plus processor or higher. Now a lot of people make a fuss about the TPM 2.0 chip and secure boot, but realistically speaking, most computers that are about 10 years old already have these two requirements. The big problem here really is the processor requirements, because this means that your PC needs to be from roughly around 2017 or newer in order to run Windows 11 officially. Now let's split this point into two different categories, those that are eligible for Windows 11 and those that are <coughs> ineligible for Windows 11. Now those who meet the requirements to upgrade to Windows 11, I personally feel like there's little to no reason not to upgrade. As an early, early adopter of Windows 11, using its beta release even before there was a search bar in the start menu, I would personally say, especially nowadays, Windows 11 is such a solid operating system, a much more polished version of Windows 10 basically. Even when Windows 10 was the latest operating system at the time, and when I said in previous videos that Windows 10 was getting better, I did say the following. Windows 10 also has a very bland UI with very flat and inanimate elements. And that opinion really hasn't changed. Windows 11's design language is much more simple, consistent, vibrant, with the new blurs, animations, and icons that are built in. There were so many forefront elements of Windows 10 that looked so dated that finally got refreshed in Windows 11, and the dark mode is just so much better in this version, just as an additional point. One of my top favorites has to be the modernized classic Windows applications like Notepad, Paint, Snipping Tool, all sporting a new look while keeping that simplicity we love from the past but with a few nice modern additions, like auto-saving sessions in Notepad. Like to those running Windows 10, I know Windows 11 is not perfect in this regard, but it is still so much better. I just don't understand how you can go back to dealing with this. Or this. Yeah, that was bad time. And the best part, this upgrade is completely free. There was actually a time when upgrading to a different version of Windows actually costed money. It wasn't until Windows 10 came out where they offered Windows 7 and 8.1 users the option to upgrade for free. In Windows 11, it is literally all done in Windows Update, which is even easier. Okay, but there's bloatware in Windows 11. There was bloatware starting in Windows 8.1, and then it got really bad in Windows 10, and then Windows 11 just continues to trend. This isn't really exclusive to Windows 11. If you install Windows 10 today, the default Windows 10 installation, there is also bloatware there, as well as Windows 8.1. This isn't really a big difference. Either way, you can uninstall the bloatware afterwards. Yes, it's annoying, but this is not an exclusive issue to Windows 11. Okay, but there's nothing new in Windows 11. This is not an entirely accurate statement. As I said, there was a bunch of the features that were released in Windows 11 that makes it a much more simple, much more consistent, much more easy to use and exciting operating system. And by the way, there's also feature updates still being released for the operating system if you really did complain about that. And there's also these smaller, uh, like every few months, there's these other feature updates released every few months. I don't remember exactly what they're called, but those are also released. So there, I wouldn't be complaining about features, but let's say, that this was an accurate statement. It's not, but let's say this was, you know, for the benefit of the doubt. I would much rather prefer a stable operating system with less features rather than, you know, what we had from 2015 to 2020 with Windows 10, where we were getting two feature updates every year, and then we were running into random issues like people's files being randomly deleted. So I'd much prefer that. And let's not forget when Windows 7 released and Windows Vista was already an operating system, and then there was really no changes between both of those operating systems. Okay, but they force people on Windows 11 to use a Microsoft account. They do the same thing in Windows 10. If Windows 10 was still supported and Windows 11 was never a thing, you, you think this would change? Like people think, like, people think that this is gonna be, this is something Windows 11 exclusive. No, this, is, this was happening in Windows 10 as well. If you use the, if you install the home version of Windows 10, by the way, they force you to use a Microsoft account unless you use workarounds if you use the home version. With Pro, there's an offline account option, but it's nothing different. You would still be forced to use a Microsoft account. It doesn't really matter. So again, to pinpoint Windows 11 for this, yes, they made it harder in Windows 11, I will say, but this, this would not have changed if Windows 10 was still a supported operating system, if it was still getting feature updates. Okay, but there's telemetry. 
<laughs> There's telemetry in Windows 7. Back when Windows 10, they also included telemetry, but then they pushed out an update to Windows 7 and Windows 8.1, and that also includes telemetry now. So Windows 11 is not much different in that regard either. And just to add on to these points, many of the initial complaints about Windows 11 have been addressed. Like, I remember when Windows 11 was released in 2021 and you couldn't drag and drop files in the taskbar. And if you right clicked the taskbar, there wasn't a task manager button. And if you tried setting default apps, it was a complete nightmare. But with the latest versions of Windows 11, a lot of these issues have been pretty much addressed. It's not perfect, as I said before, but they have been addressed and it's definitely in a much better state than it was in 2021. And really, people just say things for the sake of getting attention, they just like poking fun at Microsoft. Yeah, I understand the system requirements. This is a genuine problem people have because they literally can't upgrade to Windows 11 officially. But poking at only Windows 11 for some of these other complaints, I feel like is sort of an unfair reason to tell people to stay on Windows 10. Now, to those that are technically ineligible to upgrade to Windows 11, meaning you don't meet the system requirements, yes, this is a much more understandable situation. I do want to mention though that while Microsoft does block you from upgrading to Windows 11 if you do not have these system requirements, these are artificial blockades, meaning that there are workarounds to them and you can install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware in most cases. Yes, there are some exceptions if your hardware is super duper ancient, like 17, 20 years old, but for the most part, you are good if you try and use these workarounds. With that being said though, Microsoft says that they do not guarantee updates, which include security updates. I personally did use this workaround on my main tower at the time Windows 11 came out for I think about a year, and I was continuously receiving updates no problem. I'm not sure how things have changed since then, and I'm not saying I'd recommend this to everyone, but I feel like I should mention this for the more advanced users who are willing to try this out, and see if this works for them, because again, these are just artificial blockades. The more recommendable approach is my next point, enrolling in the Windows 10 ESU program. It seems that Microsoft knew that a large chunk of devices would still be running Windows 10 after its end of life date, so they decided to create a program for those devices that would allow them to receive an additional year of security updates. And no, this one year program is not limited to enterprises like it was for Windows 7 back when it went out of support, this program is for the general consumer. What does this mean? Well, you're essentially getting an additional year of Windows 10 support. Yes, you're still not getting the quote-unquote technical assistance from Microsoft, but for consumers, especially this really doesn't matter. You're basically supported for an additional year. Now, by doing this, if you were previously using a local account, you will be converting your account into a Microsoft account because the ESU program requires you that you use a Microsoft account to enroll. And also for most people, you will need to back up your settings via Windows Backup to enroll unless you want to pay $30, which isn't really worth it for most people and we'll get into why soon. For those using Windows 10 with a Microsoft account already, this will be a very seamless transition and you won't really have many issues. For those with a local account, this still isn't too bad since these things can be reverted after you enroll into the program. If you go into account settings after enrolling, you can just click stop signing into all Microsoft apps automatically and this will revert your account from a Microsoft account back to a local account again. And you can even go into Windows backup settings and disable some of the backup settings if you are that worried about that, but really, it's not that big of a deal. And just FYI, before people start jumping the gun, Microsoft wants you to back things up to Windows Backup so the transition to Windows 11 over the next year is easier for their users. And that's pretty much that, and this applies to users who are both ineligible and eligible to upgrade to Windows 11. So if you hate Windows 11 that much for some reason, this is still something you can use for the next year. I honestly think this is very generous, maybe too generous for what Microsoft is offering, but hey, I'm not complaining. I know people are nitpicking on this Microsoft account and Windows Backup stuff, but Guys, come on, you are getting an additional year of support for an operating system that is already 10 years old. What more do you want? All right, and to finish things off here, I wanted to mention a few important points on the support status of other programs in Windows 10 for the foreseeable future and some potentially good practices. Let's first talk about anti-malware programs. On top of updates, you wanna make sure you have an up-to-date anti-malware program that will actively keep threats off your device. In the past, I would have said that you should download a third-party client like AVG or Avast since Microsoft's offerings in the past were not very good. However, I do want to say that that has changed now, and with Windows 10 and Windows 11, its built-in Windows Defender is now a much more robust solution and does a very good job detecting threats and remediating them. And I'm happy to say that despite Windows 10 support ending, Microsoft has said that it is committed to continuously providing updates to Windows Defender on Windows 10 until October 2028, which is an additional three years of support. 
And also just as good practice, make sure all of these different types of protections in Windows Defender are turned on. I find that some of these are turned off when I open the app for one reason or another. So just make sure to do that. And also make sure you don't have any unnecessary ports open on your firewall, supported or unsupported operating systems included. In terms of web browsers, you are also very safe and your options are wide open. Similar to Windows Defender, Microsoft Edge will continue getting updates on Windows 10 until October of 2028. And Chrome has not scheduled an end of life date for its browser on Windows 10 yet either. However, what makes me feel much more reassured is Mozilla saying that Firefox is still several years away from end of life. Yes, several years, even on its standard release channel. You don't even have to be on its ESR release if any of you know what that is. So browser wise, you are so safe, you have nothing to worry about. And finally, just in general, make sure you're running supported programs in Windows 10 and that the applications themselves are up to date. Just as an example, Microsoft 365 will continue to receive updates on Windows 10 until October of 2028. If you're using the standard Office 2021 or Office 2024, just be aware of there's end of support dates, which are October 2026 and October 2020 and October 2029 respectively. So this won't be much of a problem right now, but if you find that one of your applications are no longer supported, which doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon for the most part, Consider using a web or cloud-based version such as the web version of WhatsApp instead of the desktop version or the web version of Outlook instead of the desktop version. And this applies again if your favorite application on Windows 10 is no longer supported, just try and use the web version since that one is at least getting updates continuously. Anyways, that's about it for today. Just some tips on staying secure and some opinions on the whole Windows 10 end of life fiasco going on right now. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for other Windows and Microsoft related content. And if you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button down below. And I will see you all later.